Jessica Alstrom, spiritual teacher, medical intuitive, and quantum integration specialist, answers your spiritual questions and assists you through understanding your personal process while providing tools and techniques to move swiftly through the journey back to light. Hello and welcome to the show Transcendence with Jessica Alstrom. I am your host for this podcast. Uh, my name is Jessica Alstrom and I am a spiritual teacher. I am a medical intuitive. I am a life coach and I am an integration specialist. And what that means is basically I help people basically put all of the pieces together. Uh, there's lots of spiritual teaching out there. There's lots of amazing books. There's lots of philosophy and there's a lot of universal truth. And um, I would say that my greatest aspect is being able to kind of bring those uh, ideas and format all together for the individual experience. We are having a unique ride here and everybody is kind of processing their journey through their unique perspective. Um, being a neutral, uh, I, you know, was kind of born without having really any attachments to 3D, which kind of made it difficult to really associate with anything and anyone. Um, now that I have become an adult and worked through my own personal awakening and studied my own gifts and healed my own traumas, I realize that what a blessing that is to kind of be able to stand on the edge and not be attached to anything or anyone. Uh, makes it difficult to pair a parent sometimes when I look at the way that I raise children in comparison to other people. I, I just feel as my children are just as old souls as I am and um, I need to learn from them instead of teach them. I definitely need to walk my own example and that is my form of parenting but as far as being attached to anything, uh, I have a very neutral perspective and therefore I deal with uh, everybody's unique journey in a loving, um, non-belief system type of way and I think that's where my success has come from. I, I don't uh, buy, any, buy into any belief systems at all. I just you know, I look at science, I look at spirituality, I look at physics, and I look at uh, all the things that make up this universe and look at it from a broader perspective and help kind of bring all of that into kind of a fourth grade understanding for people. Um, my abilities include being completely extrasensory in the fact that I can kind of see the quantum field. And what that looks like is it looks like uh, what m some people might look at reality as the sky and the you know the horizon and the trees and the the houses and the cars I see more of a grid like pattern and I see time as if it was in chunks of like blocked thought uh, almost looks like a movie reel to me when I see it and it's usually laced in certain color formats and that lets me uh, that helps me identify what kind of chakra that story is kind of playing out through. Um, I don't know if anybody else out there who's an extrasensory deals with their abilities the same way I do, but I've had to kind of make sense over it with the last uh, five years of really coming into my own and how to discern and have boundaries in what is real and what is the illusion and what is the projection and what is the mirror. So today's episode is all about I want to teach you all how to be your own medium. I get a lot of clients who sign up for life coaching and when they step into my room what I realize they're wanting is basically a psychic reading or they want me to connect with a deceased loved one on the other side. Uh, I absolutely have done lots and lots of that and I especially if I know that it's going to assist them in raising their personal vibration back to love I will absolutely do that but I feel as if there's slight codependency there uh, when we need someone else to see for us or hear for us or feel for us um, I think it's a great personal tool in the beginning it's kind of like holding your child's hand until they learn to walk but I would much prefer to kind of teach you all 
how to be your own medium and how to connect with not just your deceased loved ones, but your spirit guides and your uh, non-physical help out there, your star families. Um, they are absolutely around you all the time. There is no separation. The only thing that is ever separate in this universe is the idea of separation, which is usually what we would call an ego. And the ego is our friend. It has helped us, you know, wear this kind of suit of, of separateness. It allows us to have a unique experience where we are in the absence of remembering that we are connected and we are all one. So it is fun for the soul to experience separation as long as we don't get lost in it. When we become too lost in ego or too lost in our head or too lost in lower frequencies such as fear, shame, guilt, uh, resentment, humiliation, uh, or physical pain. These are all deep, deep, dense frequencies that really shut down your ability to connect with your intuition, connect with the higher realms, connect with non-physical reality. And that's kind of the crutch because think about it. When we lose someone, what is the emotion that we are feeling? We are in complete grief and glee, grief is like a thick pair of sunglasses that dulls down your ability to know it dulls down your ability to feel anything other than loss uh, feel anything other than pain um, the, the pain of losing someone on this planet is to me far greater than death itself um, I know that you're, if you're listening out there you've probably lost someone and it it is unbearable but I will tell you that this paradoxical universe is that if you want to connect you actually have to feel the opposite you have to move into the vibration where they reside and if you've been a part of my online academy or studied under me through any internship or coaching program I do extensive teaching on frequency charts uh, emotional charts because technically when we're playing in this realm of density it is all a path of blindness and being able to see and the higher vibration you are in the more you have access to other dimensional uh, energies information um, you have access to more assistance you have access to more knowledge and when you're in the lower densities like fear and frustration and anger and pain, you're really shutting yourself down from universal information, which is hard because the human experience is to shut down when something hurts. It is to shut down when we lose something. And so when I do this training with people, I basically teach them how to celebrate loss and I want to share with you guys a couple of really cool tips and techniques for you to be able to become your own medium, become your own translator of your own higher self and your own spirit guides. Get to know them on a personal basis instead of having to constantly have them, you know, um, translated from a third party, which is technically just another mirror you're adding to the equation because we are technically really all one. So what I do is when someone comes to me and they say, you know, can I, um, does my loved one have a message for me? Um, I can't go into grief with them uh, because then we just be two blind egos sitting in the room. So what I need to do is I actually need to find the space with my feeling and my imagination and, you know, my right brain and all of those amazing parts of us that are extensions of non-physical and I need to go and find the feeling of this energy of this this being of this uh, loved one and I can guarantee you those loved ones are never ever in grief they as soon as we are in that non-physical realm it is all love and light and you know sometimes these loved ones hang on before they really transcend back into source energy to act as guides or, you know, um, 
uh, way showers for their family. Sometimes they'll wait for, you know, loved ones to cross over. And if they do, um, I, all I really have to do is kind of raise my vibration up to where they're going to reside. And if you've done my studying with me, you'll know that they cannot reside below excitement. They can't get down past passion. They are love, unconditional love, gratitude, expression of self, of love, of, you know, oneness, of connection, of just that warm gooey feeling that you feel when you look at a child or hold a puppy you know that's what they get to feel 24 7 and be in complete bliss so all these new age philosophies that say follow your bliss there's a lot of truth to that because if you follow your bliss you basically have access to all of the upper realms which is all of the quantum information it's the field of possibility it's where manifestation takes place it's where miracles happen and anything below that is a advanced lesson for the soul to move out of density back up into light and connect back to source energy so what I do is I get my body because you know, we have to remember that this is a human experience here and we are, you know, having this human experience as spiritual beings, but we have to access the body's frequency and feelings in order to connect. And so what I do is I open myself up to that unconditional love. I drop into my heart space and I immediately connect with that energy and through that it's almost like going through the remote control until you find the channel that you need and click on that channel and voila there they are um, they will not come to you in your low density energy um, although they are going to be right next to you, your physical body they can't communicate because there's it's like being on two different radio channels you can't you know watch CNN and an adventure channel at the same time. You've got to tune in to where they are. So usually what I'll do is I'll give that person a message and then before that session is over I do a quick teaching because I am a very big advocate of not creating codependency. If I could actually have one person leave my office with the ability to connect with their loved ones and understand and be able to translate the synchronicities that that loved one is providing for them then I know that I haven't just uh, created a lot of joy for that person, but I've created a lot of self-empowerment for that person to now be able to not feel alone, feel less separate, feel way more empowered, feel much more spiritual, and start to understand that this is just an experience that we are having here as humans. So as I do this with each client, what I actually do is I have them go into a memory for me into their feeling body which means that they're activating the feeling within them that is a celebration and I make it very clear that this person cannot drop into fear or loss when they're remembering it so I have them tell me a fond story of of something they experienced with this loved one or a very special moment or a song that just immediately hel helps them think and feel about that person. Now the trick is for them to not feel or have the memory with then quick associating it with the loss of that person. They have to stay in the positive memory and what happens is their frequency starts to rise out of density and they have access now to the higher realm. Their job is to stay there without remembering that they've lost it. And the only way to do that is stay in the present moment with the memory. So what that would look like is someone come to me and say, okay, tell me a story of, you know, one of your fondest memories with your loved one that has been passed. And as they begin to tell the story, the ego is sitting right there, Right, reminding them that their loved one is gone and they will get happy and drop right into grief. And what I'm seeing is I'm seeing from my visual perspective is that loved one is starting to make contact with their energy field and then quickly gets kind of uh, a wall goes between them where they can't now communicate as clearly. Now your loved ones will still communicate even with your when you're in grief. 
Um, they will leave you little notes like songs on your radio, um, words in your books, um, messages in your humans as they walk by, um, smells, sounds, tastes. You know, when they can't work with you directly, they will still manipulate time and space to get the messages to you. But I can promise you that if you're in grief or fear, you're not in the present moment. And therefore, you'll miss a lot. And if you do feel, you know, your toe being grabbed or your hair being moved or you smell the smell of your loved one, your ego will quickly say, oh, that's just my imagination. That's not real because I can't have what I want. And so we have to make sure that when we lose someone that we can stay in that place of imagination and be opened enough to receive whatever synchronicity comes our way and then shift into gratitude that you can actually feel and see and and you got the message because I promise you if you say to the universe and you say to your loved one, I got that message, then what happens is success on both sides and tension is set that I can communicate with the spirit world and that sets you now on a path of a completely new reality where you are not only psychic but you got the message and so it's these little small victories of setting these intentions and really placing your focus on receiving whatever shows up this is important it's not going to come the way you want. It's not going to come the way ego needs it to come. Ego needs them to embody and sit next to them and hold them and grieve with them and love them and just come back. And that is not what the journey is about. The journey is about transcending separation. The journey is about moving back into the non-physical realm. And that doesn't mean, you know, go and commit suicide or, you know, wish for death. It means stop being so darn human and go to where they are because then you can access them at any moment. The beautiful thing about non-physical reality is that this being can be in as many places as at once at one time. So it can be right there next to you any time of the day, any time you think of them. And it can also have a, be having another experience with another loved one that's needing them. So, you know, it isn't like there's just one soul that has to go back and forth between all these places. And don't think that your loved ones are in some sort of, you know, intermediate jail cell by staying behind. They're, they're not in purgatory. They're in the place between worlds. They are in the place where they can come down into density and have a non-physical experience through synchronistic events. You know, they can channel with people who are open to receive the messages. And why not that be you? I just wanted to give you this little nugget uh, because I would love for all of you to be able to immediately connect with your guides and your loved ones and the higher version of self which is our higher self which only resides in love and gratitude and passion and excitement and when you can move your frequency manually through memory imagination sound music whatever it takes then you are a deliberate reality creator and you are going to hold a frequency now where your life is going to be less victimized. That means other things are going to start manifesting for you too. Because when you take power back in your own life and you manipulate your own energy field back into joy through manual, dis, manual intention, then you are moving yourself up back into grace, which is where all the miracles are. So I hope this helped you kind of transcend any ideas that are holding you back as far as you not being able to connect. Um, it's all belief systems. And uh, we are all still here acting as the medium and as the translator and hopefully the teachers for you until you have practiced your way into this idea. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's always a pleasure being able to kind of speak my mind on this podcast forum. Um, sometimes when I try to write, it doesn't get to my um, hands fast enough. So I absolutely prefer the podcasts over the, the writing blogs. 
but um, feel free to access this podcast anytime. Listen to it as many times as you need to to kind of get the tools down. And if you're looking for a more accelerated understanding or healing of self, make sure that you join up with our membership site and have access to all of our teachings 24 hours a day. Or come to Kansas City and take a class with me. Uh, or jump on Skype with me and have a private session. I am here for your journey. So uh, thanks again for joining us, and I will be back as soon as I can. Thank you for joining Jessica on this transcending episode. Email us directly at jessicaallstrom at gmail.com with your questions and personal challenges you would like addressed on the show. And join us on next week's podcast. You are not alone. And remember, your higher self speaks to you through people, places, circumstances, and events.